In August 1945, Eastman Kodak's headquarters in Rochester, New York began receiving unusual complaints from its customers. A large batch of photographic film had been fogged with developed images emerging covered in hundreds of small white dots. While such contamination was unacceptable in the best of cases, in this instance it was particularly concerning as the product in question was not regular photographic film, but an extremely sensitive emotion used for x-rays. Unwanted spots on an image could for example mean the difference between spotting a tumor or not, or even spotting one that wasn't even there. So Kodak dispatched one of its top scientists, Julian Webb, to get to the bottom of this. Given the random distribution of the fog, Webb immediately deduced that it was not caused by light exposures, but rather radioactive contamination on the film packaging. This was hardly a new problem indeed, for decades Kodak had been fighting a methodical battle to keep radioactive contamination out of its supply chain. The main culprit was radium, an element discovered by Marie Curie in 1898. It was widely used in luminous clocks, watches, and cancer therapy, often found its way into the cardboard used to make the packaging for photographic film, causing the film to be fogged from radiation exposures. In response, Kodak bought up the paper mill where the packaging was made, so that they could more tightly control the manufacturing process. Combining through production records, Webb determined that the contaminated packaging came from a single mill in Vincennes, southern Indiana. This mill specialized in production of straw boards used between stiffeners between sheets of X-ray films and had produced the contaminated batch around 6 of August 1945. The investigation took an unexpected turn as Webb discovered that the contaminant was not in fact radium as he initially suspected. Unlike radium, which was an alpha particle emitting substance, the mystery contaminant emitted more penetrating beta particles and had a half-life of just 30 days. Webb would later identify this element as cerium-141, an isotope not found in nature, but commonly produced by nuclear fission. This ruled out the straw as the source of the contamination, as the straw was stored indoors for a long period of time before use, and all the cerium-141 would have been decayed anyways. This left one possible source, the water in the nearby Wabish River, also used in the manufacturing process. The suspicion was strengthened when the web learned of a similar contaminated batch of strawboard produced by another Kodak plant in Iowa. Although the two plants were 450 miles apart, the two badges were produced at the exact same time and their contamination profiles were identical. This plant was also located next to the Iowa River. Based on the causes of Iowa and Wabish rivers, and the continental rainfall patterns, Webb came to a startling conclusion. In mid-July somewhere, in the southwest United States, a large event had released a large amount of radioactive fission products in the atmosphere. These contaminants had fallen to earth as rain and drained into rivers, which then carried them some 1,200 kilometers into Vincennes. Webb's deduction turns out to be eerily accurate for that unspecific fission event was none other than that of the Trinity test, the world's first nuclear detonation at 5.29am on the 16th of July 1945, with the power of 22,000 tons of TNT being released. The test was the result of three years of work by over 130,000 people across the United States and some $23 billion in government investments. A colossal undertaking known as the Manhattan Project. It was also one of the most closely guarded secrets in the world and the US government was determined to keep it that way. Though a nuclear explosion might seem to be a rather difficult thing to hide, the official cover story explained that the blast was the accidental detonation of a stockpile of conventional explosives, a common enough occurrence in wartime. The massive cloud of radioactive fallout, however, was harder to conceal. But as a few people owned Geiger counters, the government figured out nobody would ever notice. 
they had not counted on Julian Webb and Kodak's highly refined quality control system. Webb had previously worked on the Manhattan Project, so he knew about the Trinity test in 1945, so he kept his mouth shut until after the war when destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki dramatically brought the news to American public anyways. Webb published his findings in 1949 and an article in the journal Physical Review concluding the most likely explanation of the source of this radioactive contaminant appears to be that it consists of windborne radioactive fission products derived from the atomic bomb detonation in New Mexico on 16th of July 1945. While this incident makes for a fascinating footnote in the history of Manhattan Project, the story did not end there. In December 1950, the Atomic Energy Commission established the Nevada Test Site, a fleet thousand five hundred square kilometers area 105 kilometers northwest of Las Vegas for the testing of nuclear weapons. This was against the recommendation by some of the most well-known scientists like Stafford Warren who recommended tests to be conducted at least 240 kilometers away from major populated areas. On the 27th of January 1951, the first of the 100 above-ground nuclear tests on US soil took place at Frenchman Flat. Within the test site as predicted, four hours from the one kiloton test codenamed Ranger, four hours drifted for thousands of kilometers across the continental United States at Kodak's headquarters in Rochester, 4,000 kilometers away. Snow fell with radioactive readings 25 times higher than the regular background levels. Concerned that this fallout could interfere with its fuel manufacturing process, just as it did in 1945, Kodak contacted the AEC, alerting them about the contamination. In response, the AEC assured Kodak that there was nothing to worry about and issued a press release stating that it was investigating reports that snow that fell in Rochester was measurably radioactive. The report indicates that there was no possibility of harm to human beings or animals. All necessary precautions including radiation surveys and patrolling are being undertaken to ensure the safety conditions are maintained. In reality, no such precautions were being taken as four hours continued to drift across Rochester. A frustrated Kodak threatened to sue the US government for the considerable amount of damage to their products, resulting from the Nevada test or from any further atomic energy test. Incredibly, the government acceded to Kodak's demands and reached a secret agreement with the company. The AEC will provide Kodak with the dates of the future nuclear tests and predict the fallout pattern, allowing Kodak to protect its manufacturing process accordingly. In exchange, Kodak would keep secret everything it knew about the American nuclear weapons program. Other photographic film manufacturers would soon come to similar agreements. This cozy agreement, however, was not extended to the rest of the American populations. Indeed, while the AEC was aware from the very beginning of the dangers of fallouts for decades, it chose to play down this risk in the name of national security. A particular concern was the fission product Audi 131, which typically enters the food chain via contaminated cow's milk. Audi 131 contamination can lead to elevated levels of normally wear thyroid cancer, typically in children. And while such contamination can be protected against by taking Aldin supplements, saturating the thyroids and preventing further Aldin-131 from being absorbed, such precaution requires forewarning of upcoming nuclear tests that the IEC failed to provide according to a 1997 report by the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research. The AEC had strong evidence of the widespread of contamination of the American milk supply as early as 1953. It chose not to reveal this to the American public. For more than a decade, four hours from the Nevada's test sites continued to drift across the country until 1963 when the United States signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty, a nuclear test move underground. 
By then, the damage was already done. The National Cancer Institute had linked more than 7,500 cases of thyroid cancer to the US above-ground nuclear tests between 1951 and 1963. How many millions more were also affected can only be guessed at such revelations have raised serious questions. As to Codex complicity in concealing the dangers of atomic testing from the American public, the government warned the entire photographic industry and provided maps and forecasts of potential contamination. Yet, no information was provided to diary farmers nor children in these areas. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching.